Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Omega Files podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Freedom, and tonight we're going to take a look at the big Finnish audio entitled The Nowhere Place, starring Colin Baker as the Sixth Doctor and Maggie Stables as his companion, Evelyn Smythe. Let's go around the panel, get hellos from everybody. Let's start with Harry. Hello, everybody. AJ. Hello, ladies and germs. Nightwing. Uh, thank you for having me on, as always, and hello, everybody. And Vil. Hello, hello, rubbish robots from the dawn of time. Gotta keep that kitty cat happy. And sitting in with us tonight is Hot Chef Soot for kitty commentary. No, it's not going to be like Moffat's other seasons, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now this one, like I said, when I, when I listen to this one, it's like a cross between Doctor Who, Sapphire and Steel, and The Twilight Zone. This is one of those episodes that's just really, really out there in its concept where it takes you. You know, first you're starting off in like the year 2197 on a fighter carrier, and the next thing you know, you're on a train in 1952, and the next thing you know from there, you're going to Time's End. It's just one of the really creepy ones. All right, let's start off with some opening thoughts from Harry. This was a rather interesting one, and in some ways, it's, it reminded me of Terror of the Verboids in some ways. And I'll talk about that as we get along in the podcast. All right. AJ? Um, I didn't mind the story. I listened to it about six different times. It was a good story. To me, it reminded me of a reverse version of Curse of the Black Spot in a way. When you sort of think about it. Oh, I didn't even think of it. Yeah, I didn't think of it that way. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's what I thought, so. Okay, Nightwing? Sounds like a normal night out after you've been drinking. <laughs> well, unless a normal night out includes a train door popping up on your carrier and sucking in your crew members... Yeah, no, no. It was a good episode. It was a good. It was interesting. I really enjoyed it, and it, um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> okay, Bill. Quentin Tarantino does Doctor Who. <laughs> interesting. I can see this now. This one they'd have to set up as like a four camera shoot, and <laughs> where are you going to put Samuel Anderson at? You know, <laughs> or Samuel Jackson. I mean, oh great, that's bad. I just confused four. Yeah. I just confused the big bad guy Samuel Jackson with Danny Pink. Oh god, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's that possible? What's that possible? I just I just made a classic nightline mistake, or whoever that poor idiot reporter was who did that way back. Okay. Now it doesn't approve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's see, let's go for high points in the story. Let's start with the on this one. Okay, the cat doesn't have a high point. <laughs> okay, Bill, uh, what do you think were the high points of this story? <laughs> just uh, overall, the way that they had gone with it just amazed the hell out of me. It's the fact that there was not a single point in the story where I was bored. There was not a single point in the story where I was anything less than amazed and... <laughs> and my cat is kind of scaring me at the moment, so... Uh... <laughs> okay, Nightwing. Um, I, I, yeah, I have to agree with Phil. It was, um, it, for, for a character I've never heard of before, you know, like, e e Evelyn, what... For a character I've never heard of, and it, in an interesting setting like that, compared with, you know, partnered with, to uh, with Colin Baker's Doctor, it was an int it was a really good episode, uh, a really good audio, and I really enjoyed it. And it, I think the whole thing was a high point for me. Okay, AJ. Uh, I agree. There was no real high or low points. Uh, sorry, no real low points. It was just quite uh, an enjoyable story to listen to. One really yeah. sus point was though, where the doctor says he used to have a screwdriver used to do his vibrating for him, which I found a bit uh, weird. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, especially the way he opens up the door. <laughs> the security. Scratch of the. Yeah. 
Yeah, scratch the wall while she's kicking the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really makes you, you know, put your faith in, you know, good old Earth technology there when you can just bypass it by scratching on the wall and kicking it. <laughs> okay, Harry? Yeah, that's what cats do. I'd say, I agree, it was a very well done story. No low points. I mean, it just, it kept your interest throughout the entire tale. All right. Were the were right. Were there any characters you liked more than the others? Let's start with Ari. I have to say that Colin's performance as a doctor really caught up with me, and it's part of the reason why I compare this story in some ways to Terror of the Bear Boy because the doctor has to make a decision. Does he go and reset time and wipe out humanity? Does he let humanity continue on its path the way it is? And if he does reset time, does that count, in a sense, as eradication of an entire race which fits in with what he was accused of at End of Terror of the Bear Boys? It's by the Valyard, which was, in effect, a death sentence for him. That is a very interesting comparison because in this story, he had to choose. He had to choose between humanity and between all those other races that could have evolved had humanity not taken its place in the stars. Uh, yeah, it is a very tough decision, and of course, as he states in the story, he did all that he could do. He did his best, and he had to go with the established timeline. All right, let's go. All right, AJ, what do you think? Any characters that stuck out to you? Uh, the captain of the ship in the 22nd century, she was... Um quite adamant by the fact that she was not going to let the doctor go until she realized she had no other choice. She seemed like she was sticking to her gun, guns quite well. And by the way, could it be just coincidence that her name was Captain Oswin? Dun, dun, dun. That, that, I was thinking that when I was listening to it, actually. <laughs> yeah, Captain Oswin, played by Martha Cope. Can anyone else here remember where we've seen Martha Cope in Doctor Who? Uh, oh, I read oh, this online. Um, I I know, sorry. All right, go ahead. Nightwing, you got it? It's uh, Bad Wolf. She's the one that's tied up in, in uh, mainframe. She's freed, and then she's exterminated by the Daleks. Yep. She's Os a controller. Yep, Captain Oswin's played by Martha Cope, who was the controller in Bad Wolf. That's the one. Yep. So, nice little interesting jump over from the new series slash old series here. And the funny part is you see it more often than not in Big Finish. Um... Matter of fact, the guy who played Armstrong, the, the pilot who first goes jumping through the door into the nowhere place, uh, anyone remember who played him? No. No. Okay, no. I'll have to, th there's an obvious hint. His name is Andrew Wisher. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Debra's uh, son? He has a brother named Michael, doesn't he? Nope, that's his father. Oh, okay. That's right. Like, yeah, wow. Michael Wisher. Close. Yes, Armstrong was played by yeah, young Andrew Wisher, Michael Wisher's son, who we all know as Davros. <gasps> da, da, da. Yep, he played Davros in Genesis of the Daleks. You will be exterminated! <laughs> Imagine growing up with a dad like that. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> you will go clean your room. <laughs> oh. You guys oh. realize that the oh, rate... will clean your room! <laughs> the ratings are going to be up on this one because there's a cat in it. <laughs> yeah, the cat, the cat should have its own icon. Yeah, I'm going to give the cat her own icon. <laughs> okay. Nightwing, any favorite characters stuck out for you? Uh, two of them. Um, um, Oswin? Yeah, I did like her. She was an interesting... Um, I, I agree with... AJ on that, she was quite adamant. She didn't really want to let the doctor go. She didn't want the doctors going away and not and just leaving her. I think she had uh, every right to be quite skeptical. And then another one is, you know, I want to uh, how to pronounce the companion's name. I've forgotten. Oh, Eve, Doctor Evil and Smythe. That's the one. She, for a character I've never heard of before, she grew on me very quickly. She behaved like a motherly figure to the doctor. Because she was constantly, would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, and she was big, again, that motherly figure to the doctor. And that's what I like in certain companions that they have. Instead of just having a friendly companionship, they've got more of a motherly son companionship. 
And that's what I like also in the Canoe Who, when Wilfred and the and the Temp Doctor, they behave like father and son. That's one thing I kind of comparison between the two. Okay, Bill. For me, I'm going to give the captain another vote. She was amazing. All right. Yeah, now Evelyn Smythe, yeah, she first joins Colin Baker in the Marion Conspiracy, which is, you know, back a little ways before this one. And, well, yeah, what's interesting about her is the fact that she is an older companion. She's, you know, heck, I think she's roughly in her 50s, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. Which is a big switch compared to what you're used to seeing. Now, let's start with Bill and go back the other way. Uh, how do you think an old companion fares in, in Doctor Who compared to a younger one? I think, in all honesty, despite any you know preconceptions on it, it all depends on the companion. If the companion sucks, it doesn't matter their age. If the companion is awesome, it doesn't matter their age. I think that an old companion, an older companion, played well off of Colin's Doctor. Um, but that's because of the actress portraying her and how the character was written. Okay. Nightwing? I'd have to agree with Bill. Um, the TARDIS shouldn't really just be for a set group of age, you know, a, a, an age limit. I think they should, in the new Who, have a older character other than, you know, a, like, well, Brian and Wilf technically travelled in the TARDIS for a short period of time, but I'd like a companion, an older companion who sticks around for a while. Oh, okay. AJ? Um, yeah, I agree with the guys. She's written really well, but, um, I think it's more about her maturity. She's not so quickly drawn to her emotions. She's level-headed. She thinks things through, and she's emotional when she needs to be, not when she has to be. All right. Harry? I'm going to agree with the idea. It depends on how the character of the companion is written. It doesn't matter whether it's a young companion, a young person playing a companion, or an older person. It depends on how the companion is written how well the person is going to come across to the listeners or the viewers. Because if the character's not well written, I mean, a good example would be Mel. I mean, in the <laughs> TV version, Mel does not come across well at all. But when I've heard about her performance Big Finish, she does a bang-up job. Same with Sarah Sutton's character Nissa. You either loved her or you hated her in the, on the TV series, but she does such a bang-up job and big finish for Peter Davison's character. All righty. Now, just to bring up the note here, because I, I have to mention this, this episode was written and directed by Nick Briggs. He also did the sound and the music for it. Wow. What a talented guy. So it was basically... And, one -man show. Hang on, go ahead. You first, Nightwing. It's basically nearly a one-man show, apart from you know, like Colin and all the actors who played the certain characters, but behind the scenes, it was basically one man. Yep, and okay, now the big question. Now, Harry's already brought up a prime example. How would you fare this compared to what you've seen on the television? Let's start with Harry. Well, as I said, this story in many ways reminds me of, reminds me of Terror of the Bear Boys because you've got a conundrum on your hands. You either stick with the timeline and let Earth proceed as is, or you wipe out humanity and let other races take it, and risk your own timeline being destroyed. Okay. AJ? Uh, I agree. Um, it was a really good story. I'd like to see this, if it could be made on TV, how they would handle the whole uh, alien threat, I would call it. But yeah, I like the story. It was really well done. Alrighty. Nightwing? I, uh, yeah, I could see it on TV, and it would be because we have seen episodes adapted into TV episodes. So it, it, it could be possible, and I wouldn't mind it because it was a very, like I agree with everybody else, it was an, inter it was an interesting story and uh, very well written. Okay, Bill? Well, echoing what they said, but a step further, this is what we should see on TV. All right. Now... One of the I say one of the really turn points in this story, which I thought was pretty interesting, was you wind up on a train in 1952, and it turns out that the history of mankind going into space 
was all started from this point, from a simple doodles from a scientist on a page. Now, I don't know. What do you think of that take on it? You know, what did you think of that aspect of the story, the 1952 part? Let's start with Bill. Oh, I thought that was great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nightwing? Um, yeah, it was an interesting idea. So the whole story basically reflected around that man's doodles. <laughs> That's what's wrong. <laughs> move along, move along, move along. Oh. Well, you know why I thought that it was great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, AJ. Yeah, I like that point where you know it happened during the fifties because it was sort of the very beginning uh, stages for the space race. Um, in the story, though, I don't know why they didn't start. Uh, getting rid of the potential of space travel back then instead of then in the future before they leave the solar system. It seemed a little bit redundant in the story to me. All right. Harry? I thought it was an interesting idea, going back and then finding out that by going back, you're running into a major problem in that way, which forces you to go back to the future. Very interesting, very well done. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let me drop my notes here. Okay, we already gone through just about everything I want to ask. Okay. Was there anything else about the story that really stuck out to you? Anything else we haven't brought up thus far? Let's start with Harry. I think we... I say it's been well done, co everything covered. I think this is fantastic. Well... One of the best stories I've heard in a long time. Not it was for the sixth doctor, but for any of the doctors, period. Okay. AJ, anything else you want to cover about this story? Uh, just that the Time's End thing reminded me of a little bit of the crack from Matt Smith's era. <laughs> so, the, the crack in time, you know, that wipes people out. Oh, I never even thought to compare it to that, too. That's pretty interesting there. Yeah, how it compares to the cracks in time. That appear throughout series five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Nightwing. Sorry about that. Um yeah, I I thought it was um yeah. For Colin Baker, like saying that he'd had a bit of a rough rough ride in the T V series. I think the audio is where he shines, and this is one of the episodes that he shines in. I mean audios that he shines in. Okay, and Bill? Well, <clears throat> I guess kind of adding to what had just been said there a little bit ago, I would say that this is a lot better overall. This is a great story with Colin Baker. And, you know, you compare this to the literal crap that we get from Moffat, and sometimes I think that the situation is that a certain showrunner, I'm not saying that he is, but I would not be surprised if I were to learn that he was on crack. And that was where his stupid <laughs> plot line originated. I mean, he had a decent idea going, and then he just didn't finish it. This is an example of how you take a good idea and play it through to the end. All righty, then. Okay, now for the big tough question. Starting with Harry. Out of ten, how would you rate the Nowhere Place? This is a ten. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is a ten. Okay. AJ? Uh, a solid nine for me. All right. Nightwing? Ten. Ten? Okay. Bill? I'm giving it a ten as well. Okay. What about Hot Chepsit? Hot Chepsit? Uh, she's purring. That's a 27. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get out your pencils and papers. Yep. In two weeks' time, we shall reconvene. And the subject of our discussion will be the Big Finish audio. Colditz. What? Oh, what? I love that one. I thought I said Colditz. <laughs> no, Colditz. C O L D I T Z. Colditz. A oh, good David Tennant did that. Yep. Seventh Doctor Adventure with Ace. And yes, David Tennant does do a voice in that one. And you're going to be introduced to a very interesting character known as simply Dr. Klein. And yes, I think you'll all enjoy listening to that one. It's one of my favorites. And I know and also I've had someone in the comment box writing me to do that one. 
<laughs> and I told him, look, all in good time. I know I'll get to it eventually. Uh, yes. One of these days we've got to sit down and have a long talk about safety standards and explosives. Yes, the Doctor and Ace materialize, and where do they materialize? Inside Colditz Prison, back in that World War II, and then mayhem ensues from there. I may be able to be in it, but I'm expecting that I probably won't be able to do another one of these until after the 25th of August, because I'm flying out uh, next uh, Saturday, or next, uh, yeah, next Saturday morning, that's right, to go to Illinois. And when I'm up there, my access is through a McDonald's, so it all depends on how noisy. If it's not terribly noisy, I can do it, but, you know, if it's loud, it's not going to be worth the time. Okay. All right. Now, also, before we depart, like I said, this was going to be a short and sweet one. Uh, we had a couple of crew members who had technical difficulties, and then, you know, we had one other who had got invited to a wedding reception, so that's why we ran a little short today. Um. Did anyone, did anyone out here catch, or even, no, actually, I should ask the question, did anyone miss the articles on the filming that took place today? No. Okay. I saw videos. Okay, I'm going to go around. So I'm going to start with Harry, because I know Harry's excited. Harry, what do you think? Cybermen marching down the steps in front of St. Paul's Cathedral. I have only one thing to say. Repeat of the invasion. That's what I was thinking, too. This is the first time this has happened since all the way back in the 60s, if I remember correctly. All right, AJ. I agree. I think Moffat's just uh, regurgitating stuff from the past. All right. Nightwing? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it because I've never seen the invasion. I mean, I know a bit about it, so I'm kind of looking forward to this, you know, if it is, in a way, a remake Oh, the invasion was a classic. Pactor Troughton, I believe, was the introduction of Unit. I think oh, no, I, yeah. I know. No, I know a bit about it. I've just never seen it. Oh, okay. It's on my list. I've got it on DVD. It's a great two disc story. Oh, yes. Okay, Bill? I'm oh, sorry, Bill's what was the question? question? All right. What did you think yeah, of the, the filming pics today with the Cybermen coming down St. Paul's Cathedral? Oh, those were amazing. I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, now, I, I know that I heard one of you saying something about it being a remake, but I, I don't think that even Moffat would be stupid enough to try to remake an episode. He might draw some influence from it. But just with the fact of things that I'm not going to repeat that I know about this upcoming series, I'm actually looking at it, amazingly enough, from a positive perspective, at least for now. Oh, okay. Well, guys, to be honest with you, that's all I had for today. So we're going to cut this one short and sweet. Like I said, we were missing a few crew members today because y'all due to various technical difficulties and issues. And once again, two weeks from tonight, cold it's. Uh, next weekend will be the movie Battle Beyond the Stars. So feel free to join us next time, guys, because I'm going to go ahead and call this one. Let's go around and get final thoughts and farewells from everybody. Let's start with Harry. As always, a pleasure being here on the cast. And I encourage anyone, who, if you know a fan of the show, they haven't heard this podcast before, get them to listen. They're going to love it. All right. AJ. Fun as always, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you All very right. much. Okay. Nightwing? Um, hey, it was a really good episode, and uh, uh, thank you for having me on the podcast, as always, and everything. Anvil. Remember, whenever you sleep, whenever you're awake, wherever you are, no matter where you are, Kuth watching you. <laughs> okay, that's a nice thought to leave off on. Take care, Tata. Everyone enjoy the rest of your Saturday evening. Later, dudes. <laughs>